For the strap piece, I'm going to use marine ply as well. And I could have just glued two pieces of marine ply together and then cut out the strap shape from this side. But I actually want the grain to be running in the same direction as the case piece. So I'm going to stack multiple layers of marine ply and then cut the strap piece on the side here. So I cut the plywood into thin strips. And now I can glue them together like an end grain cutting board. It's a couple of weeks later and I've also glued on some blocks of wood behind so that it has a little bit more material to cut with. And now we can fire up the pen scrapper. Slight change of plan, I've mounted it to another piece of wood to help keep it square. Cutting these does take a while, especially if you're aiming for a good surface finish. I really should have tilted the table for this as it will make the workpiece to be perfect 90 degrees and I won't have the problem of the rudder bit cutting at different depths. But it worked out okay. On the second cut, the cut quality is much better than the first one. That is because I finally found the correct technique to do it, and that is to make a continuous climb cut and not make a climb cut and then find the miss a spot and go back with a conventional cut because the conventional cut will actually introduce hair out. But, anyways, let's start drilling the holes out. And now I can set up the table saw to cut just shy of the sharp pieces. I also have another piece of wood clamped to the table saw to intercept anything that flies out. But later I actually regret not cutting into it. Because I decided not to cut into the sharp pieces, I had to cut them out manually with a razor knife and chop them with a chisel. My arms were pretty sore after this, so um, yeah, learn from my mistakes. Once that was done, I can use a hand plane to smooth out one face of the sharp piece. Now I can use the belt center with a zero clearance auxiliary table and an indication of the correct thickness with a pencil mark to send the other side. Now I can use the 240 grit to smooth the belt center marks and also to the correct thickness. Finally I can send the curved surfaces smooth and also put a small round over over the edge. For the middle strap pieces I can jump straight to the belt center as it is symmetrical. Then I can follow the same steps as the side strap pieces. Repeat this about 50 times depending on your wrist size and you'll need some mental help. I mean you'll be on your way to be a great woodworker. The watch movement I'm using for this is a Maito 2035 watch movement and I got it with the hands from eBay as a package deal. And I'm using it because it is commonly available and it is fairly accurate. Let's actually put on some music to speed that guy up. Okay, I've got all the trap pieces and it's smooth. So now it's time to make the pins that go in between them using these zinc plated nails. I'm still using nails because the stainless steel pins I've ordered online still haven't come yet. And they are cut to length, but they aren't coming until February. So I'm going to use this block of wood that I've used when making Mark II. And basically you clip off one of the nail, put it in a hole in the middle of the block, file that side smooth, and then you flip it around into the ridge clip the other end off and then put it in a hole again and find that side smooth as well. Then you put it in your drill truck and send it smooth which also removes the burr. And yes, I have about 20 of these pins I have to make which is still better than last time. Just for this one, I'm not going to send off the burr just yet and I'm going to use it to remount the holes in the strap pieces and hopefully that will give me a perfect fit. I only remount the holes of the mid strap pieces so that the holes on the side strap pieces are nice and tight to prevent them from accidentally falling off. Now I can spend the morning making pins from finished nails which creates a lovely yet truthful pattern on the sandpaper I was using. Well, sandpaper don't tell lies. With all the parts made I can now try fitting them together and this should be fairly easy and hopefully without any drama. I've got both straps done and I've actually got a lot of spares left and actually I made like twice the amount that I actually needed. So now I'm going to modify the ends of each strap to fit into this buckle right here and I'm going to do it by first filing it down. 
And I've also got to drill the hole all the way through. Once again, going through all the grits. Once I was satisfied with the fit, I can use a spring pin to fit a strap to the claps. And now I can do the same thing for the other side. Then I can finally put a strap onto the watch case. Perfect. Selfie time. Before I get too excited, I'm going to install the watch hands with the new tool that I got for it. Honestly, I've never installed watch hands by myself, so this might break or make it. I think that worked. Oh yes, I forgot. I probably should install this at 12 o'clock exactly. Yes, yes, so stupid. Looks like I get to use the watch hand removal tool early. And that works as well, so lucky, very lucky. For some reason I feel I should remove the battery to stop it from moving at all. Okay, now that it doesn't move anymore, let's try that again. Hopefully with more success and more luck, then my hands can stop wobbling everywhere. And now the minute hands. Now the second hands, which is probably the hardest according to the internet because the hole is so small whoops oh no where did it go? oh no 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 oh god oh yeah found it found it oh my god that was lucky man that thing is like tiny as heck could just lose it by just looking at it Ugh. Can't flip it around. Come on. Yes. Oh no. Still not it. Ugh. Are we there yet? Yep, we are. Okay. Now let's put it on without losing it this time. Wait, is it still the wrong way up? No, it's the right way. Okay. Oh shit, my hands are shaking too much. I think I got it. Fairly sure that I have it now. Now I just need to cooperate and turn to the correct direction. Got it. Yep, got it in the bag. Hopefully it didn't damage it. And now I can pop the battery back in and hopefully I did not damage it. It moves. That's a good sign. Now let's put the crown back in. And let's see whether it even works anymore. Yep, it works. Perfect. I can't believe this actually works. Like, honestly. Wow. And now I can pop the screws back on. And now I can take some pictures of it, especially the strap, so that I can put it back together the same way as before after I put a cut of tongue on it. I gave this five coats of tongue oil and I was actually aiming for seven coats but when I hit the fifth coat it started to get so glossy that it started to look unwood like. I did however give it a final coat of wax just to add more protection but I don't think that was necessary at all. Now that it's finished I can't wait to start wearing this, it is just so beautiful. The plywood is really nice. I wish I could get my hands on some Baltic birch plywood because I think that would have turned out much better. Before people start commenting about it just like on Mark II, I have installed a crystal. It is a 1mm thick double dome crystal. 
and I also wiped on a little bit of silicone around the edge of the crystal before pressing it in place. Speaking of Mark II, here's a close comparison of the two models. At first glance you can see that Mark III has more curves to it and resembles much more of a 3D object. Mark III also fits more comfortably on my wrist as there aren't a lot of gaps around it. However, Mark III might not last nearly as long as Mark II because it is mainly held together by adhesive which would fail sooner than a whole piece of wood. Also, the grain is running in every which way and might cause early breakages when stress is applied. Mark III has a domed glass that sticks out which could cause it to be broken much easier than Mark II but got to admit it looks really nice on Mark III. The claps on both watches are also vastly different. On Mark II, he uses a butterfly clap that is actually meant for a leather strap. So I had to do extra work to fit it on as you can see the adapters. And on Mark III, he uses a standard double safe buckle, which is actually meant for metal straps, but also fits perfectly onto a wooden strap. The difference in the claps means that Mark III can be fine-tuned to a wrist size by moving the pin in different hole locations, while Mark II is fixed. It either fits or doesn't. Strangely enough, a lot of people thought that the two letters on the watch face of Mark II says 52, but it's actually my initials, SZ. So I made sure that they looks like SZ on Mark III and hopefully I won't get any more people asking about them. If you are planning to make one as a gift for someone, then make sure you make two of them. Because after you make one, you'll fall in love with it and you don't want to give it away anymore. Well, unless you made it with a CNC then of course. And also the person that you're giving the watch to must mean a lot to you. Especially if they don't do woodwork and would never know the hard work that has went behind it. Speaking as if I'm comforting myself. <laughs> and also don't use plywood unless you are ready for some really, really tough work. But the hard work does pay off and you'll get a beautiful watch that is also more water resistant. I will have plans of this on Patreon soon so make sure you go and check them out. Currently my parents and all my relatives close to me are banging on my doors for me to make a wooden watch for them. So I guess you'll see more of these being made in the future, especially a ladies version. As always, thanks for watching. I had a lot of fun building this and I hope you had too.